Hello everyone, welcome to the section on arrays. So in this section we will talk about our first data structure of this course that is known as array and it's a very simple very useful data structure and it has a lot of real life use case as well. So what is an array? So you must have learned about a variable in a programming language. So what is a variable? A variable is a bucket that stores some data. For example, I want to store uh, the number of uh, let's say friends I have. So I can create a number of uh, variable of the type integer and this variable will store okay I have five best friends so it will store this inside a particular memory but suppose we we have something complex we want to store marks of students and we want to store marks of let's say 100 students okay so what we need we need is a collection of elements okay we cannot create 100 variables but what we will create is an array okay so let's create an array like this so uh, we call this as let's say marks and each index okay so this array is indexed from 0 uh, let's say if it is having a size of 100 then these are 100 buckets which are lying linearly in the memory so this linear collection of elements is known as an array so the last index would be 999 and we can say we have 100 buckets which are lying linearly in the memory similarly i can say this looks like a array of cats okay so instead of having a simple data type we are having a different kind of a data type where each element is a, is of the type cat and each cat can have different attributes uh, maybe a cat height or maybe a cat color maybe a cat type okay but for now let us just focus on simple uh, simple array let's say you want to store the marks of every student out of 100 maybe this student got 89 this got 78 this got 32 this got 56 and so on okay and maybe this got 84 so what will happen is how you are going to read this array how you are going to write this array we are just going to see that and you can access marks of any student by writing marks of i okay so what you can do you can access the ith bucket by using this notation marks of i so you can perform different operations for example you can read what are the marks of the ith student you can update what are the marks of the ith student you can even output what are the marks of the ith student so let us talk a little bit about arrays so array is a collection of elements of the same type placed in a continuous memory location okay so these are the two important uh, things you should remember uh, the array should have elements of the same type but in some other languages like python you can have uh, equivalent data structure is called as a list and list is heterogeneous in python okay but in c++ and in java these arrays all the elements should be of the same type that means you cannot put a string and an integer inside the same array okay if you want to store uh, data like this you also need to convert this into a string everything should be of the same type okay and they are placed in a continuous memory location that means uh, each bucket is let's say if each integer is taking four bytes and let's say if this address of the memory is 100 then the next address will be 104 the next address would be 108 the next address would be 1112 and so on okay so that means arrays lie linearly inside the memory okay now we will look at how we can perform different uh, operations on arrays how we can create input output and update so one more thing i want to talk about is let us talk about character arrays okay so in character array uh, each character has a size of one byte instead of having this uh, memory of size 4 bytes like we have in the case of an integer this memory is of the type uh, 1 byte okay so if this address is 100 the next address would be 101 the next address would be 102 and this is how we can store uh, characters inside a particular array so if i say okay uh, give me array of 1 so that means at array of 1 what we have it will print b okay b as a character so e at each position we can store a single character and this can be any character okay so in an ideal case uh, we will uh, see later also these character arrays should be terminated 
by a special character that is known as a null character okay so this is something you should not forget you should always put a null character at the end of a character array so we will see why it is needed and why it is helpful so let us talk little bit about integer arrays first so the this code example shows you how you can create an array so here we are creating an array and we are telling the compiler that you should allocate a memory of how much size i need 100 boxes and since it is of the type integer each integer takes 4 bytes so it would be 4 into 100 so it will allocate a linear memory of 400 bytes when your program is being uh, compiled okay so the kind of allocation we are doing here is known as static memory allocation we are defining the size before the program is executed we are not defining this size on a runtime so we are statically allocating these arrays and here what we are doing we are creating array okay and it has 100 elements and the first element of the array is initialized with zero so whenever you do an initialization okay so what happens is this is called as a initialization list okay so in this list we only define the first element as zero so whenever do do uh, do you uh, you do initialization of an array the remaining elements of the array would automatically become zero okay so what would happen in the first case if you uh, print this array you will see that this contains some random data so we call this random data as garbage data okay we have not done initialization if there is not initialized it will contain garbage what will happen in this case so we have given three elements in the initialization list so we would have three elements whose uh, values are one two three and the remaining elements would be zero automatically okay and what would happen in this case so in this you can see we have not defined the size of the array okay so if you are given uh, the initialization list then uh, de defining the size is actually optional and what you can do is you can uh, you will have only array of size 3 in which we have three elements 1 2 3 okay so you can also have array of complex data type such as a string so string is a predefined data type and string itself is an array of characters okay so you can see this is a linear array of strings okay and each string is also an array so it's kind of a 2d array so we will see this little later on in this course okay so just i'm telling you you can also create array of some complex data type okay. so i hope this is clear how do we create an array and now in the next video we will do some coding and see how we can input output update and print an array